Hello friends, today in this video, we are going to talk about some UI tweaks which I have made to have a little bit of more component approach and make it scalable. So if you see, I have two new drop downs in here. Actually, previously it was there. If I open the app actually, let me log in first. Because the Heroku server is sleeping, maybe it is taking a little bit of time. Let me see. Yeah, I'm in. So the server took some time to start. That's not a problem. But you can see this drop down doesn't work. And obviously, we didn't have any other drop down. And in the latest version, I have two drop downs, both of them working. And I can go to submit page and I can go to my videos, which basically now it's taking back to the dashboard. So some small small changes i have made which is primarily to show you how you need to divide the component okay now let me also try to open up the github code base so in here if i open up my nav tsx let me see it's taking a bit of time actually all right so this is my navigation which is in here right okay which is right now live you can see this drop down start somewhere here. I think, yes, this is the drop down. Um, no, this is the link dashboard. Then my submit video, and here is the drop down. Okay, this is hard coded. So this is the button, and then the entire ULLI structure. Now, if I go to my nav, see, this was a 71 line thing which, with had, which had only one drop down. And now, these are the two arrays which I have. Okay, and then if you see my drop down is just one line okay uh, the way i have configured it is drop down with a list of items and a name to it and this is the name which is showing up over here this amitav roy and the task is the name property so what is the idea behind it if you see Let's go back to the code base. If you see, the li is kind of a hard coded component, right? This is a perfect example of items which you should make as components, right? So I decided that this is you know, going to be some kind of a drop down thing. And then, you know, uh, there will be two types of component inside that. One is this li with a link, and the other one will be the divider or the separator, so as to say. Okay, if you see here, I have this line in between okay now to pass this information what i have done is i created two arrays the first one is the primary drop down which i'm calling it has a link with the name as my videos the type is link and the href is slash dashboard then i'm showing a separator because the type is separator i don't have the name and href and then again, this object. So this is one object of type I drop down. Similarly, I have my profile settings and logout. And hence, in here, I can see these three. If I want, let me steal this thing over here. Like this. And now I have a separator. So you see, this is so easy and beautiful to work with. Anyways, so let's get into business. So we have we have already seen that these are the array items which we are sending. This is a, an array of type I drop down. That's fine. And then you know these are regular stuff. I have the name, branding name, and you know, normal links are shown here. A little bit of. Uh, class name formatting so that you know, I can show an active link. If you see right now we are in the dashboard page, so it is in black. If I go to this page, it becomes black. So the active link was handled in here using the router dot path name. If you see, I have included that here as well. So router equals use router, and then I can check for these kind of stuff. I'm thinking of making this as a component as well, but let's see, we will do that later. Okay, now let's go into the dropdown. So this is my 
drop down component okay i will show you things one by one so let is let's just say yeah so my drop down component takes drop down props which we have already seen there are two props coming one is the items array and then the name of the drop down so i have already declared that inside drop down props you can see these two are required parameter uh, attributes so i destructured them and then i have used the use state hook to keep the state of the drop down whether it is open or not and then there is an important piece which is i need to track whether the drop down should be closed or not when the user is clicking outside right if i'm clicking anywhere else or on the same item it should close but otherwise it should not okay so that's what i wanted to achieve so if you see i'm clicking here somewhere on the separator it doesn't close but it will close here so for that i used an npm package let's see the name of the package is react outside click handler i have the types for this as well so it is it's a good package it, it has a lot of downloads uh, i was able to easily integrate it and so the drop the drop down entire component is inside that outside click handler and the outside click handler just requests for one prop which is the function which will be called when outside click is being handled so in that what i have done is initially i have set the state of the drop down to be false which means the drop down should be closed by default when outside click is done and if the drop down is open i am setting it to close okay so not open if you see on outside click if open is true then set open to false okay and then on the click of this a tag i am setting the open to not open which means if it is true it will be false and if it is false it will be true okay like that the next thing is obviously the drop down name which i'm showing over here that's why you can see the tasks and amitav roy okay oh, by the way amitav roy right now is hard coded i want to sh show it through the cookie i'll do that later on okay um then there is one class over here i could see that for the drop down to work there were two places where i wanted to you know i i need that show class one is over here in the ul okay and the other one was in the li okay these two were done that's the only logical step and then i'm iterating through the items which i'm getting from the props i'm checking for the length and then items dot map and in inside it i told you i could see only two types of drop down items one is a link and one is a separator so if you remember the array which we are sending of items it is of type i drop down item now if we go over here inside the interface uh, i drop down item you can see i have defined the interface for it okay because it is typescript i always try to define the interfaces it's very helpful i won't say always but most of the time okay so i have types i am only supporting link or separator over here and because a separator doesn't have a name and an href these two are optional okay so this is the i drop down interface okay it, because it is i it represents the interface and then let's go down with that i am iterating over those items if i see that the item type is link i'm calling one component which is link uh, drop down link and otherwise i know that it is a separator so i'm just calling the drop down separator okay now those two components are part of these component itself i haven't created individual files for it because they are very small in thing they are just some you know markup if you see for example drop down link it's just returning markup it is getting the item it is pushing the href into the link component and it is showing the name so this component i thought doesn't make sense to have an a file of its own plus this link may not individually exist so this is part of it 
similarly the separator i don't see the separator going outside the drop down so i said okay you know till i am seeing a reason for these to be separate components they will be here inside this and also yes because you know the uh, drop down link needs certain props i added this interface as well which is i um, you know the item props which takes drop down item as an item okay because if you see when i am looping through the array of items if i find that the item has a type of link then i'm sending that item and this is nothing but the array of items which i have passed over here right the individual item inside the array is i drop down item right i hope you get that so if if not let's let me explain again so this is the array okay we are saying that each element inside that array is of type this okay and these are the objects the these individual objects are basically a representation of this interface okay and this is the entire thing which we have passed to drop down so when the drop down gets it it passes through individual items if the item is of type link i am taking the drop down link component as the renderable item and i'm passing the item because i need the href and the name right so that's done over here otherwise i render the separator so that's kind of done okay the outside click handler is closed and this in itself renders this beautiful drop down which we can see over here okay is there anything else which we need to see so let's see what are the changes which we have made there is this drop down component which i have added we went over this entire component this is the navigation okay the drop down is inside the nav then we have made a lot of changes in the navigation this is that particular component okay i created the video card as an individual component because if you see the dashboard was kind of repeating the thing so that became an individual component in itself and i am sending the video id over here so that we can render the um a thumbnail image of the video how the uh, thumbnail id is coming is something which i'll show you in the next video where i am actually using the laravel's properties to get that okay let's keep this video to only the front end but yeah you just need to understand that i'm getting a video underscore id in it and that's how the you know youtube id is generated for me and i can fetch the thumbnail and yes a little bit of css and the package json for you know the outside click component and that's how we get this okay in the next video i'm going to walk you through the concept of having some attributes inside a model on the fly which we are going to use to fetch a thumbnail from youtube okay we are not storing the video id of the youtube link somewhere so what we will do is we'll fetch the url uh, rather the video id from the url on the fly and we will um, send it to the front end for an image to be downloaded okay so that's it for now guys if you like the video do click on the thumbs up icon and yes don't forget to subscribe to my channel